Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with part 10 of my Final Fantasy X How to Be Overpowered walkthrough. And uh, we have just finished up with the Calm Lands. And as you can see here, we're going to be getting Yojimbo and starting Mount Gargazette. So this is after we've just finished capturing one of everything in the Calm Lands. And we're going to be continuing. And like I say, there's a boss coming up. But this is something I wanted to show just before. Now, if you manage to use Tidus's first strike uh, escape to dodge 50 lightning bolts in the Thunder Plains, here is the point in the grid where you want to use the three strength spheres. Now, three strength spheres plus 12 uh, strength for any character is a massive buff and it's extremely useful. So if you did manage it, then that's good. And uh, you should think about maybe doing that. Uh, I believe you can backtrack to the Thunder Plains at this point, but I didn't actually try it in this playthrough. So that is a consideration if you want to try it. If you haven't done that, then don't worry about it. You can always just keep uh, the people in the air, in that area of the grid at the end of Tidus' grid or teleport them there later and use that. Now, with Yuna, I'm actually going to be changing tack a little bit. So instead of finishing off her own grid, even though it does have some nice plus four boosts and gets you holy, instead I'm going to be moving her to this end part of Lulu's grid so that she can go for double cast and Lulu can go for flare. Now you can either use a friend sphere, which is what I did there, and just teleport to Lulu directly if she's at, if Lulu's at that area of the grid. What's slightly better is to use a black magic uh, sphere and just go to Thundaga, which is the middle of those four uh, black magic spells. And then you can use uh, one of the black magic spells to go to, to activate Thundaga and then use a return sphere, which are less rare, so more common than the friend spheres. And just use a return sphere to teleport Yuna to Thundaga. Now, if I'd have done it that way here, it would have saved me a few S levels. So you may want to consider doing it that way, especially because the black magic sphere and return sphere are, like I say, more common than friend spheres, which are quite rare. Now after you've activated those black magic spells, uh, you can use Yuna to come down to this part of the grid. Use the level 3 key sphere that you got for winning the Chocobo race. And the level 4 key sphere that you should have picked up from a chest near the end of the home section of the game, the Albed home. And uh, you can get double cast, so Lulu, uh, Yuna will be able to double cast and use the Arga spells, which is quite powerful. Now, just another quick note about Yuna at this point in time is I am going to stop using her S levels so she's already quite powerful she's more than powerful enough to be able to deal some good damage she has no physical strength so that doesn't matter about capture or anything like that and the reason I'm going to store those up is the lower in Aeon stats the easier it is to raise them permanently using mana spheres or speed spheres or anything like that so if we keep Lulu's stats lower it's easier to raise anima stats when we get anima and that will be uh, useful for boosting magic. So we're going to come on to that as part of the stat maxing thing, but that's just a consideration. That's why I'm not using S levels for Yuna. Now when you cross the bridge after you come out of the Calm Land, you'll be ambushed and attacked by this boss after a short cutscene. And if you use Provoke with Tidus and keep him in the fight, it's very important that you keep him in the fight after you used it. The only thing that this boss will be able to use will be Blast Punch and Blast Punch as you can see here does 50% of your current HP so because it only does percentage based damage it does less and less each time and it won't actually be able to kill uh, Tidus so that boss will not prove a problem and then you can just wail on it with your strong attacks now you may want to buy some Holy Waters after the first cutscene when you get to Gargazette uh, you may want to buy just a few Holy Waters here you can see I've got 20 and bought just a couple of the other uh, items for status because there are a couple of nasty enemies but in particular one boss that would be uh, useful to have the ability to remove the zombie status for. Now before you continue we're going to have a fight against Baran and Yenki Ronso and it's a one-on-one -on -one fight with Kimari. So what you want to do first is take the 30 pendulums that you got as one of the prizes from the Remyem Temple in the last race, in the last episode sorry, and the Remyem Temple races and customize Master Thief on an armor. Preferably the MP Stroll one if your MP Stroll one that you've been using has a spare slot, but if not you can put it on something else, that's fine. And then give uh, Kimari a different weapon than his um, Taming spear, spear as well. Spear as well. And the reason you want to do that is because uh, using the 30 pendulums to make Master Thief on an armor means that the rare steal from Biran and Yankee Ronso is guaranteed. And instead of being able to steal one level 3 key sphere per time, you will always get their rare steal, which is two level 3 key spheres. Now, level 3 key spheres you don't get a lot of, and it's about the point in the game, especially if you're overpowered like you may well be from here, 
that you need some level 3 key spheres. So we're going to get as many as possible by stealing at least three times from each of these two Ron slots. So first you can use use ability to have a chocobo feather and haste Kimari because he won't have learnt it naturally because it's in Tidus's area of the grid. So after you've ha used haste on him you can also use regen. He probably has, a, he should have protect and shell as well. You can use those if you want but it's not really necessary uh, because these guys shouldn't do a lot of damage anyway really. Um, but you can use protect and shell if you wanted and then regen will uh, last for a little while. It's not indefinite so if your health starts going down again uh, it's probably when regen has run out so you'll need to recast it. But anyway once you've got yourself uh, hasted you can just steal and using that uh, master thief you'll get two level 3 key spheres a time. Now you want to steal at least three times from each of the Ronsos. They are obviously separate enemies, so they have uh, the chance of stealing goes down each time you successfully steal, though. And you just want to steal from them as many times as possible. So at least three times to get uh, 12 level 3 key spheres. So later in the fight, after you've stolen from them a few times, uh, you can damage them with one of your Ronso Rages. And if you damage them enough and they're on the same side like this, after using Bulldoze, um, Biran will use Mighty Guard and Yenke will use White Wind as you just saw there. Now you will not be able to learn these Ronto Rages from them until after they've used the skill. So there you can see I used Mighty Guard and it also filled up my Overdrive again. Uh, so I can use Mighty Guard with Kimari and then I'll use Lancer on Yenke. Now they also have a bunch of other things so you can learn stuff like Thrust Kick and Doom from them if you've not learned them already. So make sure that you use Lancet until you stop getting Ronso Rages from them, just to make sure that you've learned everything possible. So you see there I just use White Wind, and now I've got Regen back up and Mighty Guard, and I can just continue trying to steal. So steal from them either three or four times, it gets progressively harder to successfully steal from them, but you should be able to get either 12 or 16 level 3 key spheres. And as I mentioned, this is what we're going to use them for. So I've teleported Oren over to this same quick hit uh, end of Tidus's grid and now I can use a level 3 key sphere to get another strength plus 4. So Orin's very quickly got strip an extra 20 strength which is a massive amount of strength. As I was saying before if you didn't do the 50 lightning planes dodging uh, you can always just keep Orin, Kimari and Tidus in this part of the grid until after you've got the airship and then you can go and do the lightning dodge when you've got encounter none which is easier. Now Tidus is there and he can break into Yuna's grid for a little bit of agility. Yuna's just going to sit where she is until uh, the end game where I can start leveling her up after I've got Anima and that will be part of the end game stat maxing. Now Kimari can use one of the level 3 key spheres to break out of Yuna's grid and into Tidus's and he can learn quick hit and then look at that there is just four of those strength spheres just sat there and another within a couple of sphere, a few sphere levels of striking distance so he will very quickly get 16 strength. So uh, that's another big boost for Kimari, so his strength goes up and so he's a bit more balanced than just being a magic user. And now Orin, Tidus and Kimari all have higher strength. Now if you reach the end of Riku's grid, as I'm going to show in a minute, uh, I also like to get the strength that's at the end of her grid, because there are a few. Uh, one, two level four, plus four strength spheres locked behind a level three key sphere. And uh, that's very useful as well. And as you can see, Lulu uh, just makes her way going up towards Flare, which is the end of her grid. And once she's got Flare and all the plus four magics at the end of her grid, uh, that's quite useful for her. And that's more or less where I will pretty much um, leave y Lulu because she's not a good end game character for physical damage or anything like that. So I pretty much stop using her after her grid is largely finished. So here you can see uh, Riku has backtracked just a little bit and she's able to do a level 3 key sphere and get another plus 8 strength and whilst Riku's typically not been a hard hitter it's now quite easy to make her a hard hitter. Now I've got two skill spheres that you pick up through the game um, if you've got both of them you can use one to move Riku to quick hit and then she can move through Tidus's grid so she uses a skill sphere to activate quick hit and then a return sphere to move to that section of the grid and she will actually move to quick hit and then she can get that plus 16 strength as well and move through Tidus's grid. I also use the other skill sphere to get Tidus mug which is useful. So after you've done that fight with uh, Yenke and Buran we're going to go back to the en entrance of the calm lands and where we fought defender you can come here and get the rusty sword. So you go down the ramp under the bridge where you fought defender 
and you can come into the sunken cave. In the sunken cave there's a couple of useful things to get. Uh, as you can see here I've actually got um, the fortune sphere that you get in that chest there. So I'm just going to move Titus, Titus back, uh, get a few S levels with him and activate this plus four strength. And then I'm going to use a look, the Lux Sphere that he got from uh, the one of the previous temples as the Destruction Sphere prize in Makalania, and then use a Fortune Sphere to increase Tidus' luck. And that will give him a better chance of hitting flying enemies and gives you two characters that can hit flyers. If you come across any Tonbrus in the Stolen Cavern, do try and catch them, but you'll want to weaken them with magic as much as possible, so maybe um, the double cast that Yuna just got and Flare if Lulu has it yet. So you want to weaken them and try and keep it asleep by hitting it with a sleep buster or sleep attack to stop it from being able to use its counter attack and then use sensor to wear down its HP with magic but finish it off with a strong capture attack because they're quite rare and you want to catch them. Now towards this part uh, right near the end of the cavern of the stolen faith this cave area uh, there is an albed primer as well so make sure you pick that up. After you continue on, you reach the back of the cage and you get your Jimbo and you want to choose this bottom option to defeat the most powerful of enemies. Then he will haggle and you have to pay him a quite large sum to be able to get him as an Aeon. Now your Jimbo, uh, you just want to start off offering 125,001 gil and uh, then knock it down to 112501 gil. And you can get it to be as low as 190,000, but a couple of thousand isn't a big deal. So, uh, to be on the safe side, I would just offer him about 150,000, just over that gill on the third time, and then you get him for about 190, low 190s, uh, which is a pretty reasonable price to pay. Now, your Jimbo is the way that you can cheese through a lot of the uh, Dark Aeons if you don't want to do stat maxing and say so you just want to get. A lot of the achievements but that's not very rewarding in my opinion so I do like your Jimbo but I'm not going to be using him to uh, cheese or Zanmato or any of the uh, Dark Aeons or anything like that but he is uh, an Aeon that you need because you need all of the Aeons to get my, the Major Sisters anyway. Now you carry on up Mount Gargazette and just capture everything uh, it's pretty straightforward but it's very very important that when you get near the top of the mountain and you see this guy this is once and you must must speak to him it's so important now he is Oaka's brother and a merchant and the reason that you must speak to him on Mount Gargazette is this is the only chance you get to speak to him here and if you do not speak to him you don't have to buy anything but you have to speak to him if you don't speak to him then he won't appear in Makalenia Forest at the end of the game and it's very important in the end game that he's there because he sells empty four slot weapons that you can customize and even more importantly he, sell, he sells four slot armors and that is what you need to be able to customize the final armors you can get them from fiends but they're very rare drops and you have no control over which character they drop for and so that costs you either a lot of time or a lot of money or both trying to get those drops so make sure that you speak to him he does have some really wicked gear anyway uh, i always buy the booster cactuar if you have the money it gives magic booster and plus 15 percent magic which will double the amount that lulu costs to uh, spend on spells but it will increase her damage but the thing that's really neat about that is you can then use 20 of the three stars that you got as the five chest prize from the remium temple chocobo races and put one MP cost on it, which is the combination that her celestial weapon actually has as well. And so even though uh, it's doubling the amount of magic, it's only doubling that one MP. So everything does more damage for her, but costs only two MP per spell. So that's a pretty good use of those 20, 20 of those three stars, if that's the way you want to play it. There's also the Blessed Bracer and the Blessed Ring, which will give uh, either Orin or Yuna zombie ward and that's quite useful so you may want to consider buying at least one of those um, for one of the bosses you know Leska, that's coming up so make sure you speak to once and then we're going to be continuing and doing the bosses at the top of Gagazette and then going to Zanakin so thank you for watching and please like and subscribe for more videos